Okay, it's Jim here, Ludus Games. I'm doing another uh, weekly deck tech. Um, but today, let's do two shout outs, okay? We're gonna do two shout outs this week. Uh, first, let's start with some music. Um, a shout out to Monster Truck. Great band. If you haven't heard them, check them out. This week's general. Oh, can't see that. So let's bring him up. He's on the screen now. In the car. Whoa, that was my second shout. You didn't see that. All right, monster truck. We'll check you guys out another time. Uh, my second shout out, if you just, well, where am I? Right on the side. Uh, Rogue Deck Builder. Uh, this guy's been around for a long time and he's got some great videos and I would suggest checking him out. You know, delve into his uh, page. I won't say anything, just check him out. Anyways, King McCart is our general this week. So I'll just leave that. I'm just gonna put him to the side because you can't really see that. In those, but he's up on the on the screen there. Let's read him, okay? Why not? Um, King Makar, the Gold Cursed, uh, two black, two colorless, uh, legendary creature, human, two three body, hmm. meh. Um, uh, inspired. So when he untaps, um, when Mac King Makar, the Gold Cursed, becomes untapped, you may exile target creature. Get rid of a creature. Exile creatures. Hmm. That's a great idea in, in Commander. Um, let's get rid of creatures because almost every Commander deck that I play against, most, let's say 90% have creatures. So get rid of them. Built in, in, in mechanic. Hmm. I think we need to break this, guys. Uh, so I need your help to make this a good deck. Uh, so let's see. If you do exile a creature, Commanders don't count because they go to the Command Zone, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, so commanders don't count, but any other creature you exile, get out of here. Um, if you do, put a colorless artifact token named gold onto the battlefield. Okay, I get an artifact. I get to put that artifact into the battlefield. I'm going to use my Captain McCard here for you uh, Trek fans as my, you know, demo card. So, <clears throat> you know, get an artifact. You have an artifact in play. Whoops, that probably sounded loud, so I'll, I'll try to refrain. But anyways... You have uh, an artifact in play. Can we abuse that? Is there any way we can kind of like make that work? Hmm. It also has sacrifice this artifact. Boom. Sack it. Uh, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Hmm. That's pretty damn good. Any mana, any color in my mana pool. And colored mana is really an important thing. <laughs> Uh, in the game of manage magic <clears throat> so how are we going to break this guy well i kind of i kind of put together a footprint and i'll explain some of my my thinking but i need you guys to help me out you guys we need to push this over the edge i don't know uh what will push him over the edge so let's look at the man mana base what do i got here 34 lands <clears throat> Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 swamps. Uh, I'll go through my um, non-basics. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, I'll try to uh, go through them uh, a little slowly so you can pick up on the names. But uh, a Buried Ruin. I'll bring up some of the cards that are more important. We can talk about, um, you know... Um, whether they should be cut, like Buried Ruin, for instance. It's just, it's in there to give me an option right now. An option to bring back an artifact from the grave. This could turn into a swamp in a millisecond. I mean, it's just there to kind of, hey, let's see if I need this. Um, Rogue's Passage to make your general unblockable. Well, the concept is you attack with King Makar, make him unblockable so no one can kill him. And then on your upkeep, you get to untap him. This is in the essence of what you want to do with Makar, but it's not fast enough for my liking. But it's in here because you got to play test it. 
uh, thespian stage to uh, copy other uh, lands. Shijo, and I, if I'm butchering these names, I apologize to whoever came up with them, so uh, my apologies. Uh, Shizo Death's Storehouse. This gives, um, gives you black mana. That's not bad. Doesn't come into play tapped. Uh, target legendary creature uh, gains fear until the end of turn for one black mana. That's not bad. You can make King Makar uh, blockable. This has more upside than um, um, the Rogue's Passage because it comes in uh, untapped and gives you a black mana right away. Um, so I like that fear. I mean, if you're playing somebody with black creatures, then they can block your general, obviously. But uh, So that's in there. Ancient Tomb. If you don't play with this card, it gives you two colorless mana. Come into play, two colorless mana. Uh, it dings you for some life. But every deck should have that card. Uh, Phyrexian Tower to give me a sack outlet and give me black mana. Do I need it? I don't know yet. Uh, Deserted Temple. This brings back lands from the uh, from the uh, graveyard. Well, if you're running Cabal Coffers and uh, Urborg, which we are, it's a good way to get Cabal Coffers or Urborg back because people like to, boom, blow those up. Um, Volrath Stronghold, it's a way to recur creatures, not too many creatures in this deck, so mm, I don't know, maybe. Arcane Lighthouse, well this you need to uh, keep in your deck because this gives, uh, uh, takes away Hexproof, so King Makar can target Hexproofed uh, creatures, so this I would say needs to stay. Um, Petrified Field, oh this, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. Ooh. Uh, deserted Temple, and for those of you who are screaming when I when I said it, I apologize. Uh, deserted Temple untaps a land, so in, uh, it, this untaps Cabal Conference. Petrified Field goes to get it from the graveyard. So um, again, they're just there for utility to, to give me an option. Uh, I don't know if I need it. Again, easily swap them to swamps. There's your Urborg. Uh, what's what, what was next? Oh, we'll get to that card in a sec. You didn't see that. There's your Urborg and your Cabal Coffers, right? This gives you, like, tons of black mana. Uh, a Vesuva, this can copy Cabal, uh, can copy my next two cards. Um, so it's important because these last two, I think, are essential for the deck for King Makar. And I'll bring them up so you can follow along here. Maze of Ith. Now, <sighs> Maze of Ith. It untaps, it, it protects you against uh, uh, offensive creatures, but on your turn, if you attack with King Makar, right? So I got the King, do do do, King, get in there, boom, uh, attack. But why are you attacking into a board state of creatures? Nah, uh, don't worry, I got this. Maze of Ith. I'll tap that, I'll untap him, remove him from combat, no damage. But trigger goes on the stack, right? Boom. So if you can find ways to, like, you know, abuse this, not too bad. Now we're starting to get into that area of how do we really put King Makar over the top. Now I did. I forgot to mention when I when I uh, gave props to Rogue Deck Builder, he did a deck like this, and this deck has a lot of his cards. Um, but I think we can, as a you know, a community, really amp this deck up and really put some um, thought into how to make it even uh, more broken. I hate to say that, but you know what? It's okay. The cards are there. Let's use and abuse them. Let's find the strategies and the synergies. This next card <clears throat> is Holdout Settlement. Okay? So, for this, this gives you a way to tap King Makar. You don't need to attack with him. You tap him, add a mana to your pool. So, if you can find a way to untap King, um, when you're abusing his triggers. And there's ways in there. So, we'll go over some of those in the deck. So this land gives you a mana that's colored and allows you to tap your general. So this says, tap on a tap creature. You control. Oh, I control King Makar. Where is he? Ooh, 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 ooh. There he is. Okay, yeah, I control him. Um, add. Uh, so I tap him. He's untapped. I, I tap him. Um, add one mana. Ooh, there. Add one mana of any color, right, to your mana pool. That's not bad. So now if I can get him to, you know, 
hello on top. Well, now I can start abusing his ability. Trigger goes on the stack. I can pick a target creature. You know, there's a lot of problems. This deck uh, um, has to learn to play through those issues. So we need to figure that stuff out. Anyway, so that's the last land. Uh, next one I'm going to talk about is Planeswalkers. King Car can generate a lot of mana. Because I'll show you one of the cards that's important, uh, I think, to the deck. Um, uh, I think uh, a real deck builder um, uh, talked about it as well. So you have lots of, you'll have lots of mana, okay? So, Ugin. Eugene, right? Have a look at Eugene. Because you're generating tons of mana, you'll be able to resolve good old Eugene here really quickly. Um, and when you do, like, he can control the board. This deck again, oh, well, not again, but I should mention, there's a lot of artifacts. Uh, and and, uh, and again, you know, I'm, I'm this is the last time I'll say this, but Rogue did, Rogue Deck Builder did build a deck, and I saw his deck and made me think, but I, I just want to, you know, work with the community to see if we can't make it even better. I think we can. I think it needs to be tuned a little bit. I don't know which way, but anyway, so he has a lot of the same I ideals in the deck, uh, and I have to give him props, so watch that video first. Uh, but so, anyways, you have uh, Eugene. You got lots of um, artifacts in the deck. You can uh, control the uh, the board uh, with Eugene, so he's good. I, you know, I won't go through it. It's, on, it's, up, it's up there, uh, but it's a control um, um, Planeswalker. The other uh, Planeswalker that I would have considered would have been Karn. I have one copy to my other deck and I didn't put it in, but this is one we can like play here because Karn controls the board uh, unbelievably as well. And if you've got tons of rocks uh, and you're looking for your win Karn, you don't even need King Makar on the board. You can just uh, win and uh, and go off. So uh, Spirit, Ugin Spirit Dragon, and that's, and, and I guess Karn too. I would put Karn in the deck. Uh, and there's lots of room for it. I'm going to talk about enchantments next. I got four of them. Um, Phyrexian Reclamation. And none of these are, are, are uh, married to the deck. They are here as a, as a means to give me options as I'm playtesting. Um, I don't know if the options needed, quite frankly. But, you know, so, so here is Phyrexian Reclamation. It brings creatures back from the, from the yard. <sighs> Necropotence. Allows me to draw cards. Um, yes, you pay life, and there's other some other setbacks, but nothing's a better card. Uh, draw engine in black than Necropotence. Um, and we can debate that, but let's not. Um, Erebos. He's, uh, or she, I, I, I never know some of this art. Gender neutral or whatever. Erebos, God of the Dead. Um, he also allows you to draw cards. Um, it's just a way to, 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 when you're stuck and you need to dig out, it's a good way. I put them in there, see how it runs. And this one that I want to talk about, I'll put it up here. Pestilence is my last <clears throat> enchantment. And I put it in here because Pestilence is a way to control the board. Um, uh, and it deals damage to all creatures and all players. So it, it's like a... Um, uh, area effect card to control the ground um you know you're, you're paying life for it but i don't know i i i haven't played it yet uh, conceptually it's good i haven't played it yet uh where i was in a situation where this is amazing so i'd like people to give feedback on on a pestilence but think about it you know you're at the end of the turn if there are no creatures in play bury this okay so that's that's a drawback right right away even the mana cost for me is a drawback at four mana um, but one black deal point of damage uh, to each creature and player, that ability is huge. You can also resolve this in, in a, in a larger board state and kind of, okay, I'll, I'll hit this tier of creatures first and I'll hit, hit this tier of creatures. Um, it hits, uh, it deals damage to a player. So I believe, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the damage goes on the stack and you could redirect it to planeswalkers. So I, <laughs> So I have that in there, and I think it's a decent card, uh, but I don't know. Uh, you guys tell me. So let's go first. Eggs first. 
let's go grab a drink of water because you know what? Everybody needs to be hydrated. A drink of water. Okay. Yum, yum. Um, um, so my utility spells. And I'll end up with one. We'll start with the first being the tutor package. And <sighs> Vampiric Tutor is the best tutor um, for black, in my opinion. Uh, you can debate Demonic Tutor is good as well, but Vampiric is instant. It's only one mana. You go get what you need. You put it on top, and, and, and you uh, you be off to the races. You get this early. It's amazing. So you're, you know, you, you open a hand with some, uh, you know, low mana, but you can tutor for mana if you don't draw into something uh, uh, better, um, you know, or if you don't draw into a land or whatever, you know, you can go get it uh, or get a, a, a mana rock or something to set you up. Um, mid game, you need to answer uh, problems on the board. Boom. Late game, you want to go for your win con. Boom. And it's like instant speed. So you wait and turn instant speed. Boom. Cast Vampiric Tutor. And you're off to the races. So if you're playing black and you you want a tutor, you need to put uh, Vampire Tutor in. Um, I love to play decks that have very low mana curves and that can get into what they need to do very quickly. So Vampire Tutor, I've rambled on about that enough. Uh, Demonic Tutor, another great um, um, tutor. Uh, Beseech the Queen, another uh, tutor. It's, it's conditional. It can cost uh, a lot, but we're playing mono black. It costs three mana. Your sweeper card. Did I put this? What's next? Yes, I did. Uh, Toxic Daily. So if you're running black, I know I talked about a blue card zitter staple, but this is it. Toxic Deluge for three mana. If you're playing black, put it in your deck. And if you're not, then something's wrong. Because... It's, it, it answers the board state. It answers indestructible. It puts minus, minus, uh, minus X, minus X counters. Counters? Or no, just they get until the end of the turn. So it's not even counters. Uh, but still, it is an amazing sweeper card. It plays around Gaddick Teague, um, who controls uh, spells. He's, he's fun police, by the way. Maybe one day we'll do a deck on him. But um, And for all you Gaddick Teague players on you, shame on you. No, actually, <laughs> great deck um um so toxic deluge again if you're playing black you need to play that card uh we have dark ritual which you know uh, gives you three mana on turn one uh a snuff out uh, uh i listen this deck doesn't have much removal uh because it's built into king makar but i thought there was room for an instant speed removal spell um you know when you can't get an engine online or you just need to you know you instant speed sorry what I meant to uh, uh, make note of this card is the zero uh, cost. You know, uh, what are the conditions? If you control a swamp while I'm playing mono black, so yeah. Uh, you may pay four life instead of paying snuff out's mana cost. Four life and just kill a non-black creature. Just done. Boom. And Vince, if you're out there and you're watching this, thank you, sir. This is Vince has taught me a good lesson with this card. <laughs> um, the other, what's what did I put up next here? Let me see. Oh, no. Oh. You didn't see that card. It's my last spell that I want to talk about that card. But I put two spells that rip through a player's library. Um, you, when you face uh, a deck that has combo in it, um, you want to go rip to that person's deck, rip out the pieces of combo, and be done with it. I don't have to worry about it. Let's see your deck win now. Uh, you can really um, slow your opponent down. So I put Praetor's Grasp in there. You know, in a pinch, you can grab... Um, uh, one of their combo pieces or you can go grab a mana rock to accelerate you um, this is good because you can cast it or just you know get rid of the combo piece <laughs> a sadistic sacrament does the same thing uh, it rips out a number of um, um, uh, pieces so uh, what is it five but if you can pay play it for 10 go get 15 cards take them exile them out of the deck just get just get rid of them. you don't need to play with those ridiculous cards, get them out of the deck, <laughs> just be gone. Um, oh, the feeling when you can pull this off and just go, mm, no, not no, you, you don't need this card, no. I mean, just for that alone, <laughs> it's just worth a spot. But anyways, it, it is part of the playtest. Yogmoth's Will, this will bring back 
uh, um, lets you play cards out of your graveyard. Imps Mischief um, for two mana instant. Uh, change the target of a target spell with a single target. You lose life equal to that spell's converted mana cost. Someone puts, you know, um, counter spell in the stack. You go Imps Mischief. Um, lose two life. Let's say it's a mana drain. I lose two life. Uh, redirect it to back to mana drain. Um, and there you go. I mean, this is a good card to have. Uh, it gives you, you know, in a black deck, the ability to counter something uh, when you're trying to go for a win or something. So if you're setting up for a win, Imps Mischief is good to have in your hand. Just remember that. Um, and this last one that you saw was Exsanguinate. Now, this card, okay, this bad boy here, this one, okay, two black, two black, and X. So if you can get X to go off, you just win the game, right? So if, and we all know there are plenty of situations, you'll be able to see some, that you can generate infinite X. Well, with infinite X, each opponent loses life. So it's not damage, just, you just lose it. Just lose the life. You gain life equal to the life loss this way. If you're playing some kind of black deck and you can just get to this as fast as you can, you're winning all the time. Let's say it was hypothetical uh, to do this in a black deck by turn five or turn six. That's a win, right? Can you do it? I think you could by turn six consistently uh, get to this, but you know, I don't know which deck. Don't know if King Makar is that deck, but King Makar can generate um, mana and you can certainly skew your deck to go with this, or we can all try to skew the deck to, to, to go to Exsanguinate as fast as you can. Um, but that's, you just kill all your opponents on, at the table because they just lose a life. You make them at zero and they lose. Done, right? There's just no arguing that. So if we can figure a way to do that, maybe in King Makar, maybe in another uh, deck, uh, but King Makar is so good because, you know, let's go back to him. Uh, you know, when that trigger goes on the stack, you're exiling creatures and gaining um, artifacts. If you can get that to go off, you can have easily three or four artifacts. If you can abuse that now, that's that's a whole different ball game. Um, I know there's some other ideas. I'm not sure that this deck is going to get there with that uh, concept, but maybe that's where it needs to go. Um, and again, others have kind of thought of that first so but let's try it let's play test it out there uh i'll move to my creature suite uh where were we here no we did the toxic we did exsanguinate oh oh there he is so you didn't see that guy <laughs> so <clears throat> a couple just basic utility creatures uh, and again you know uh, i'm not going to bring them up but crypt uh, is in here because again for the mana and the exsanguinate that we just looked at you know, he can help you get to tons of mana. And he's also four. One black, three colorless to drop. Uh, Weather Wretch takes care of graveyards for X. So colorless mana, just go get rid of that card. So any graveyard shenanigans, he will easily uh, take care of that. Uh, Kozilek. I generally put Kozilek or um, Ulamog, the original, in my deck because it helps, me, it helps protect me from mill. Uh, it's also a win con on its own. It's also uh, draws me card. Well, this one in particular, Kozilek I favor more because it draws me cards. It also can be killed. So, it, you know, you, you play Wrath of God, boom, it destroys all creatures. He goes into the graveyard, I reshuffle my yard and then I can do uh, or cast him again. So generally I put one of these big baddies in there um, he's still legal. Uh, he's amazing. I know people don't like Eldrazi's and Annihilator, and certainly you can make those decks if you're that kind of a player. No, that's not yet. Yeah, no, that is good. That is, no, I, I love Eldrazi decks. Um, anyway, so... Cause luck. 
not too bad. Um, then I'm going to get into some creatures that um, you'll see in the engines of the deck. You can tap and untap King Makar. So you want the creatures that can abuse that ability as well. Servant of Timoret, who would put that card in their deck. Uh, you know, one, three, you can regenerate him for three, uh, but whatever. When he untaps, each opponent loses one life. You gain life equal to the life loss this way. So if we can get into a cycle of this, tap and untap, those triggers go on the stack, then you can drain all kinds of life away from your opponents. <clears throat> Pain Seer. And again, if there's other uh, creatures you think are better suited to do different things like that, that tap and untap, certainly Pain Seer is Bob uh, when she untaps. Uh, you know, I get to go uh, get a card and take life. Because of the nature of some of the CMC cost in this deck, this card is more hurtful than not, but the ability to draw cards, you know, if you lower your mana curve, this is an amazing card. Um, and bigger, so now we're moving up to six mana, that's six life if I get it off the paints here. Uh, and bigger, again, it taps, uh, and it's got a number of abilities. Deal one damage target creature or player, not bad. Uh, target creature can't attack or block this turn, hmm, okay, or draw cards. You have to put some mana into the draw cards by every turn. Every time you can abuse that. <clears throat> Hallow Sage. I know, this this reflection, I, I apologize. Hallow Sage, uh, when it becomes untapped, you may have target player discard a card. And now to the card that you saw, Night, Mar Night Market Lookout. It's one mana. And if you can get you know him to um, tap, and I, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. And he's only one mana. Just, right? So if you can start abusing this, tap and untap, you win the game, right? Because again, this is uh, loss of life. This is not damage. Just to, just lose life. And then Arcbound Ravager. Have, have, have you met this this little thing? Have, have you have you seen this? There's a reason it's expensive and people play it because you can abuse the Jesus out of this. I, I try to keep it clean there, but you can abuse the you know what out of this card. Okay. Um, you know, and that's why he's in here. There's there's a bit of a uh, um, an infinite loop that you can do with this. Uh, it, it takes a bit of setup. It's not the easiest to do in King Makar. Uh, certainly, maybe I'm not playing it in that manner, but you can race to this, and you can win the game. Um, but in black, there's so many other two-card-like combos that you can get um, to quicker, but because I wanted to keep it colorless for the most part... Um, uh, I chose this little combo. So, Arcbound, and you've have you met his friend Spine? Spine, I mean, Isha. Hold on. Ooh, which way am I going? There we go. Boom. Let's put Spine up here. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, well, well, let's go back to Arcbound and let's read what Arcbound says. Okay, it's a two mana. It's drops for two. Um, sacrifice modular, so he comes in with a plus one one counter on him. When it dies, you can uh, uh, put his plus one counters on another target artifact creature. Okay, now, I'm not worried about that. But what I am looking at is sacrifice an artifact. So let's just pick. It's a sack outlet. I just pick an artifact. I sack it. Brilliant. Put a plus one one uh, counter on Arcbound Ravager, so he goes up. So you could just put a billion counters on him, swing for lethal, right? Yeah, but, you know, it's always pesky blockers. But when you meet his buddy Spine over here, <laughs> the Spine of Isha has seven mana, but, you know, we're trying to uh, create tons of mana, so that shouldn't be an issue. Spine of Isha, when it comes in, let's see, when it enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent. Just just destroy that thing over there that I don't like. Just Just get rid of it. Now, it's an ETB effect, so enter the battlefield. If there are things that stop that, yeah, that messes it up. So you'll have to deal with that. But otherwise, if you don't, or someone doesn't uh, stop ETB effects, and there's not too many cards that do that, um, when it comes in, it just, just that thing, is that, that card right there? Mm -mm. Don't like it, 
Just you get, get rid of it. Just get it off the table. We don't need that business around here. So <clears throat> the other part of spine says, let's see here, when spine is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, so it goes from here into my yard, um, return spine to my hand. Boom, all right, I got it in my hand. Awesome, so what do I need to do to put it into the battlefield? Oh, wait a minute, sack him with uh, the arc bound. Brilliant, sack it to the arc bound, it comes back to hand. Now, if there was a way where I could cast this literally for free, then I just put it back into play, sack to the little guy over here, destroy target permanent. It's a creature in the way. Oh, let's get rid of that. It's land, no, no, no. Right, enchantment, uh, uh, get out of here. And he will either come across for lethal or this would just clean the board state of any troublesome, well, just get rid of everything right at that point so that's the idea if you can generate infinite colorless mana these uh, these two cards are win con right there two i mean the caveat is you need infinite mana okay all right we can get there but two cards okay so how are we going to get the infinite mana how are we going to do that indeed well <clears throat> People, there's two ways that I'm going to talk about. The first way is this guy, right there. And if anybody from Wizards of the Coast is listening, if anybody, please. This card is overpowered in Commander. It really is. This resolves, people will just concede. Um, because people are setting. And if you're playing this without setting this up first, you're playing it wrong. You need to uh, get yourself in the position to win resolve this card and then win right uh don't try to pass turn because that's when you're just not going to win you have to rely on luck so <clears throat> let's put them up on the board here paradox engine it's legendary so there's ways in magic to go tutor this guy uh <laughs> it's five mana just, you know the threshold for competitive i would uh i would argue would be six mana Anything six mana and above needs to be limited in my opinions, or my opinion. Um, so five is reasonable. <clears throat> Whenever you cast a spell, untap all non-land permanents. Okay, well, um, mana rocks. I tap them for mana, play a spell, untap everything. Um, so if you can play your Spine of Isha over and over. You can just keep tapping for mana. Um, I found these this combo went really well with uh, uh, Paradox Engine. Um, I've been a bit disappointed in this build uh, because it don't seem to be getting to it efficiently. Um, so maybe it's, it's an issue with the deck where it's trying to reach out in too many directions and it isn't focused on one... Uh, uh, you know, one, I wouldn't say linear. You should always have multiple win cons in your deck. But maybe too focused. Too focused. So, Paradox Engine. It's, you put this in any deck. They, I mean, infinite mana with this. Infinite draw. Infinite, like, you know, here. This bad boy. I mean, this doesn't even need the engine so let's put that guy up <clears throat> staff of domination this is just hey you got some mana well let's give you endless amounts of utility how about <clears throat> untap the staff how about gain a life how about tap a uh, target creature oh sorry untap target creature how about tap a target creature how about draw a card like you know, if you can literally make those uh, uh, mana symbols go away, uh, you know, and all you need is to be generating five plus mana turn with, you know, a paradox engine or whatever, um, you can win the game, right? So this is, a, this is a card that I think needs to be part of the deck. 
okay, in, in whatever format or whatever build, uh, because this is a win con, it, it's utility like, like no other. So it's important to have, in my opinion. But tell me otherwise, as long as you play test it first. Okay, mana rocks. I'm going through a bunch of artifacts, <clears throat> but I'm going to talk about mana. I'm going to start with what I think is a very important uh, uh, um, piece of color fixing in the game, um, and then move up uh, uh, through the artifacts that produce mana for me in this deck from CMC cost zero and up. But let me uh, let me just reflect on this guy here, Gilded Lotus. The Gilded Lotus gives you three colored mana on the tap. Again, if you can abuse this with uh, Paradox Engine to untap it, it is endless amounts of colored mana. Um, and there's, I mean, you know, if I give you endless amounts of colored mana, you should be winning the game uh, of Magic. So this is important. Uh, the drawbacks to this card are it's it's an artifact, so it's susceptible to all forms of removal. Um, it's five mana as well. Again, five mana, I just lately I've been, you know, cringing at, at, at five mana as, as being a, um, a high costed card, but because what it does and what it can do, it's in here. Um, but I think we need to find a way to make this over the top. I don't know whether that synergy exists in this deck <clears throat> yet or not. But certainly, this... Ugh, and Aaron, thanks for the foil guild, Gilded Lotus, by the way. So shout out to Aaron. Uh, I'll go through my zeros. I got Mana Crypt. I won't uh, describe each and every one of them. Most of you should know. Uh, Mox Opal. So again, this this um, segment is geared to, to more uh, uh, challenging deck building. Uh, so I apologize if I'm going too fast for people. Uh, or too slow or whatever um, but um, you know I'm really trying to reach out and see if we can together make something work um, that's really good and efficient um, Chrome Mox is at zero and now my ones I have Soul Ring uh, Mana Vault now you know uh, there's you know there's band lists that are banning some of these cards let's just talk about that for a second Play any way you want to play, okay? Uh, whatever works for you. Um, we play in a play group that's competitive and follows uh, a ban list, but whatever ban list you play with, certainly. So obviously, if a soul ring is on your ban list, change it up. Put in something uh, efficient. I would say try to get it to be uh, something that produces mana, colored mana. If you're going to change this, there's a lot of things that that you can change this for at the two, uh, two uh, spot that gives you colored mana. The reason I went with this is because we still play with this in our play in our play group, and um, uh, the two mana spells that give you colored mana they typically come into play tap. So soul ring, <clears throat> mana vault, uh, pyramid of the pantheon. This is a test uh, play. See how good this card is. I know uh, Rogue thought this was uh, a decent card, and I totally get where he's uh, coming at with this. I just I need to play test this more. I need to understand this card, whether I can abuse it a little bit more. Uh, now to my two is Grim Monolith. Uh, I have <clears throat> three threes, uh, one odd one, whoops, sorry, and a, and a four. Uh, pristine Palisman at three, just because if you can infinite, once you get Paradox, and if you can do this, um, uh, this gains you life. Uh, Basalt Monolith. <clears throat> Sculpting Steel. I've counted as a mana rock because there's so many of them. But it could be another utility artifact. Uh, I like it countered in my um, uh, mana rock uh, sort of subgroup because that's where I want it to be. I want to be playing this as a mana rock. <clears throat> especially a Gilded Lotus. You turn this into a Gilded Lotus. This is for eight mana. You have six colored mana at your disposal. That's amazing. And then Thran Dynamo to wrap it up on my artifacts. 
my mana artifacts. So now I'm going to talk about <clears throat> utility artifacts. Um, I'm going to uh, show you Trading Post. Um, if you don't know this card, please look it up. It gives you tons of uh, utility. Um, and with Spine, it can also go off because you, you can sack an artifact to draw a card. So you can draw a card and then replay Spine. And the turn, uh, sack this, put it back to your hand. So check Trading Post out. These... <clears throat> These next three are creatures, but I consider them utility, okay? And I'll show you uh, the one utility, uh, or how I see it as utility, okay? Because let's be honest, <clears throat> in competitive EDH, uh, a one mana, one one is not that exciting. <laughs> Unless you're playing Edric and you're drawing cards off of it. Edric players, I see you. <clears throat> um, you know, Okay, let's just, let's just read this. Let's take our take a moment. So one mana is so turn one you can just plop this guy into play for one Frexian life or one black mana <clears throat> uh, and X remove up to X counters from target permanent for each counter removed this way X parasite gets plus one plus zero until the end of turn. I'm not concerned about him swinging for uh, uh, lethal damage. What I am concerned is ripping counters off planeswalkers. You put two planeswalkers out there. Okay, let me rip five counters off that. I'll attack that planeswalker for lethal. Like, this is a really good utility. And if you can only play it in a black deck because of the uh, the um, the mana costs in it. But it is a card that is underutilized and people pass over this often. But it is a utility card for a very low mana cost. Um, then moving on to the two is uh, uh, Frexian Revoker. He shuts down. Let me see what does he shut down. Name an online card. So I don't know. Let's name Soul Ring. See if it works. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated. Well, to tap Soul Ring for colorless mana is an activated ability, so I can just shut it off. <clears throat> so that utility is really good. And there's a Pithing Needle that you could put instead of this, which is a one drop, but maybe the two of them wouldn't be bad uh, to have into play. A Junk Diver to recur um, any artifacts from my graveyard. It also is a flyer. That uh, That is really good because when you're facing uh, a Flying General, if you can get this guy out, recur him, you know, and at the same time, bringing back artifacts, that's great. Um, the next two <clears throat> um, are just ways to give him Hexproof, Swift Foot Boots. The reason why um, it's this and not um, uh, Lightning Greaves, because Lightning Greaves is Shroud. You cannot target your general when you're trying to equip or untap him. So we don't need Shroud. What we need is Hexproof. So Swift Foot Boots. That's a two and Champion's Helm is my other way. And then Strionic Resonator to copy his uh, triggered ability. And Voltaic Key to untack Gilded Lotus or any other mana rock. When you're going off again, this is uh, really good. Because untapping non-land permanence includes the Voltaic Key. <clears throat> Next, we'll go through ways to tap Makar. And ways to untap him, okay? So, <clears throat> Thor and Bite Staff, you can tap him. Um, pay two, tap this creature, deals one damage to a creature player. And whenever a creature is put into the graveyard, untap this creature. So, this in a combination with Death Touch, tap two. Um, death Touch, somebody, a creature dies, untap, target another creature, and exile. I, my, the, so, People need to help me with this, whether or not this is something that is either pulling the deck in the wrong direction or in the right direction. <clears throat> the Viridian Longbow taps him. Does one damage to a player um, or a creature, I believe. Is a creature? No. Player or creature. Sword of Parnum's a way to tap and untap. So Sword is... But what did I put up for the next one? Did I do Paradox Engine again? I did. 
Oh, there we go. That's that's the bad boy. But Swords of Parnum's um, on taps and taps. Paradise Mantle taps for uh, colored mana. And it's a zero cost. Uh, Springleaf Drum is a one mana. Uh, taps uh, him down for um, any color of mana. Now we have the Umber Mantle. Let's bring the, the mantle up here. So, <clears throat> if you can tap... Makar efficiently and and I think you know with the advent of I'm giving this away for my next uh, or my last group vehicles because vehicles you can tap um, on different turns you can you can um, keep triggering the ability so crew this interaction okay crew this again um, with another creature so you can tap with vehicles and then for three mana you untap with this guy you can make your commander infinitely large by giving a plus two plus two when it taps, but you know, whatever. It does require three mana costs, so you, if you can find a way, even with just paradox engine and mana, to activate this, you just clear the board of any creatures, and you're getting uh, colored tokens back into play. So umber mantle to untap uh, mage right stone untaps, <clears throat> jador saddlebags untaps. Thousand Year Elixir on taps. Uh, you tap this for colored ma colorless mana, and then uh, tap an untapped uh, uh, legendary print. This taps. I had it in the wrong pile, but this taps um, your general, and it gives you colorless mana. But it is three. It is three. So I'm gonna talk about <clears throat> the last section of King Makar, and and I'll leave it. Uh, leave you guys with that and see what adjustments you think should be made. Uh, but the first guy here is Smuggler's Copter. Let's bring this guy up. It's two mana. He flies. Crew him for one. So Kim and Carr comes in. You can crew them right away. Boom. You attack with them. You draw. You loot. Right? Is it... Um, you may draw a card, and if you do, you discard. So you can loot. Just draw, go, mm, okay, yes, I like that, or no. Uh, that, is an, that is a really, really good ability. Um, that's two mana. Then you have Sky Skiff, and again you crew. So you 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 cast this King Cars out. And you just crew it at any time. End of turn, crew this. Uh, pass turn. My upkeep on tap trigger goes on the stack. So uh, I really like the vehicles and the, this interaction. I think this is key to the deck. Um, uh, and you know the ability to go put uh, you know turn two put the skiff out. Turn, let's say I ramped with my mana rocks. Turn three, put King Makar. Tap this right away. Now you're looting immediately. Um, this, oh, sorry, not Sky Skiff, Smuggler's Copter. But you're looting immediately. But Sky Skiff still. Two mana just to be able to tap your general. That's good. And this guy, he's the best <clears throat> um, uh, vehicle here. And I think we could even stop here. I have four more. I just don't like uh, the three CMC cost. But for this guy, this garrison over here, that guy's amazing. Cause let's read him, okay? Let's let's look at this guy. Mobile garrison, three mana. Mm, not happy about that, but whatever. He's an artifact. He's a vehicle, so I can crew him. What's his crew cost? Two. Uh, <clears throat> whenever uh, this guy attacks, um, untap another target artifact or creature you control. Hmm, okay, so I'll crew him. I'll attack. Trigger the stack. Uh, so I crewed him with Makar. So let's just visualize this, right? So I got the artifact sitting over here. Makar says, I'm going to crew you. Boom. Now I'm a creature. Uh, I'm going to attack you for three points of damage. Right? It's a 3-4 body. Boom. I'm attacking. Trigger goes on the stack. What does the trigger say? Untap another target artifact or creature I control. Well, Makar is a creature. Let's untap him. Boom. Trigger on the stack. Oh, exile that blocker you have and take three damage. I get a, a, a token, color token. Perfect. This garrison is the best uh, uh, card synergy with Makar. Okay. When I resolve this, the, the, the pleasure of being able to tap him, uh, you know, crew this attack and get rid of a creature is, is amazing. So maybe this needs to be, we need to race to this sort of uh, control. 
um, uh, as quickly as possible. And then the other uh, <clears throat> artifacts are, are um, or other vehicles are in four more. They're in here because of their crew costs, right? So Makar's a two, three, so you need stuff with uh, crew uh, one, two or less, sorry. So <clears throat> Aether Spear Harvester's in there. This is a good card. What does it uh, do? Gives you energy. Uh, and you can gain life like, until the end of turn. So gain some life back if you're losing it. Some of those card draw, like Necropotence, pay life. <clears throat> the Renegade, Renegade, Renegade Freighter. Uh, when it attacks, it gets plus one and trample. So that's a 5-4 attacking. That's not bad. Um, uh, Fleet Wheel Cruiser. Who for one. It's got haste. It's a 5-3 trample. And then Unearth Express, um, crew one, whenever it attacks, put a camera on it, and it's a 4-4 trampler, and it just infinitely gets bigger. So <clears throat> those last uh, vehicles, we can look at uh, changing. I think uh, having maybe just three of them and, um, you know, getting to these more efficiently would be better suited for the deck. And, you know, four car, a four-card slot could go to something <clears throat> more relevant. But they're there to see how they work. Um, so I challenge you guys. Get out there. Tell me how to break uh, King. <clears throat> we can rebuild them later on. Um, you know, once suggestions and, and, and ideas are in, and I'll play test them at the store. Um, and everybody needs to play test them out there if you're building uh, this deck. But um, uh, just remember, you know, lots of decks play with creatures. Lots of win, con, win, win cons resolve around creatures. So if we can control the board, control the creatures, we can win the game. Um, and, you know, it's got exsanguinate if you can get to that uh, win con um, as an alternate win con. Other than controlling the board and, and damaging out. Uh, anyways, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you guys can really give uh, some good suggestions and let's make Makar uh, broken. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. Peace.